Amen. Come on, how many feel Jesus today here? I feel good. You may be seated. You know, thank you so much for joining us uh, in this room and online. We're honored to have you today. And uh, today I get the chance to do something a little bit different and, and to do a tag team message with Scott and Sophie Wallace. They're going to set it up here real quick. And, um, you know, I was thinking in light of what's happening here in Wisconsin, and again, it's just like another, it's like every week this year, and, um, you, know, you know, Chadwick passed away, you know, from Black Panther. It's like something is happening every week that's just like, man, really? Like, I'm ready for 2020 to be over. How about you, man? It's like, man. Um, and really, any moment of our life, I believe we need the church. We need each other. We need, you know, the village is the series this month. But to me, I think, I just feel like right now, more than ever, in light of what's happening, what's evolving, what's going on racially, with COVID-19, with unemployment, the political climate, so much more. And then I heard recently that uh, for our area, uh, those that are in need of mental health support, um, uh, that is increasing by 68% by calling hotlines, reaching out for counseling, just reaching out for help. So you know, we're in a situation where all of us in this room and online are facing something at some level. And yet I believe God is able to help us all through it. Amen? And so we need each other. And so today's message is going to be entitled The Power of a Village. It's, and it's going to be obviously based in the scriptures and then disseminated very practically so you and I can understand what I believe God has for all of us and how we can be a support and have support right now in this moment. So let's bow our heads just real quick one more time. And I pray for us in this room and online that God will keep us safe both in this place and as we go about our week. I pray that all of us would, uh, would, uh, would willingly lay down our resistance, set aside our distractions. We would all move forward in our faith. And that all of us would lean in these next few moments and receive something from heaven and be changed by the love of God. And that all of us would take our next step today in our faith. In Jesus' name, everyone said amen. So let's welcome Scott and Sophie Wallace as they come out. They're awesome. Thank you. And uh, before they share real quick, I just got a text message and says, uh, because of COVID-19, you know what we're doing, we are in overflow right now. So thank you for watching an overflow. And, uh, and we're honored to have you and, and to have you obviously online as well. Please, I would ask you if you would consider just to make room for as many people as possible because of, you know, respecting social distancing. We're trying to do our best with all of this. Consider the 930. The 930 is growing, but there is still room. There is parking spots. There are seats for you at 930. It is not too early. Come on, somebody. That wasn't that good, but it is not too early. And so we love you in overflow. Thank you so much. I will say Scott and I are not brothers. Just because we're white and bald doesn't mean we're family. Not all white, bald people look alike. I heard we were going to start a, a bald guys group out there. We should. It's Ronnie the best way to hit, I'm, I'm do here. Well, thanks for having us. Like you said, I'm Scott Wallace. This is my wife, Sophie. We're the group administrators here, uh, which just basically means that we help organize, train, schedule, and recruit uh, group leaders. So if you see us coming down the hallway, look out. Um, We've been here about four years, and for about two years, been the group admins, and we have two children, Olive and Amos. Yeah, they love City Kids, um, and we, uh, we got plugged into groups right away when we came to City. It was, there were two weeks left in the session, mm -hmm. and Scott drug me to a group, um, but I'm so glad he did, and so we're excited to share with you today. Yeah, it's going to be great, and they have some great nuggets to share, so I want to set them up and let them share mostly in the message if you have your Bibles or your phones, please turn to Acts chapter 2, verse 46 and 47. Now, I want to give context to this, and then I'll read, and then I'll weave in these verses as they share uh, their part today, and I think it's going to speak to all of us in this room and online in, in an overflow. In Acts chapter 2, the beginning of the church, you know, the birth of it, the start of it, whatever word you want to use, happened in a move of the Holy Spirit. And um, as Peter stood up and preached the first message, 3,000 people received Jesus that day. At the end of the chapter, which is a few of these verses here, there's a grouping of about four or five verses that are talking about just kind of how they conducted themselves, uh, what they believed, what they 
uh, were studying. God was doing miracles to the apostles. Uh, they were studying that doctrine. And then these two verses give us even more of a, I would say, a supernatural and practical um, a way of doing church, and, and more importantly, a biblical way of doing church. Now, obviously, this is a different you know, part of the world. It was in Israel, and obviously, it's a different you know, day and time. However, it's still applicable to us today. So check this out. It says in verse 46, they worship together at the temple each day, which would be like a, a larger church gathering. They met in homes for the Lord's Supper, which is communion, and shared their meals with great joy and generosity, all the while praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all the people. And each day the Lord added to their fellowship those who were being saved. So notice in the way the church started, and I believe this is, I mean, it's the main reason why we do it this way because it's biblical and there's other, you know, benefits to it. But notice they and they started doing church by meeting in a large group like we are right now. Then they were also a part of a group at some level, as we would call it. They met in homes and they shared a communion and then they shared food. So that means they would share life. And if you would study sometime even the idea of supper in Jewish custom, that wasn't like a quick Chick-fil-A, you know, scarf it down in 10 minutes. Come on, Chick-fil-A, Jesus chicken, somebody. <laughs> Lemonade is like... Yeah, anyway, uh, it wasn't like that, right? It was a couple hours, right? It was, it, was, it was truly different. Even in European countries today, their dinner looks a lot different than the American dinner. Average, they say the average length span of an American dinner is 20 minutes. For example, like in, in France and in Greece, it's maybe an hour to two hours, even right now. So this is, you know, in context, they were doing life together. They were really connecting and that was both practical and it was uh, uh, to be safe. And they were dealing with Roman rule. For us today, I would say more than ever, we need to follow the same principles. So thank you again for being here. Thank you for being online and for watching an overflow. And yet I also believe that as we're ready in our, in our pace to make room in our life for a smaller group so that we can connect and, and understand the power of a village. So I want to say this, and I'll set them up. I believe that Jesus set up the church. No church is perfect. No individual is perfect. We're trying our best to get this, but please hear me. I believe from multiple verses in the Bible, Jesus set up his church to be a place where we freely love, we freely forgive, we freely accept each other, we mend as, as needed, and we grow through unity. Those things I just mentioned, you know, kind of quick, are big deals. To forgive, that's not always easy. To love, when it goes, you know, crossways is a challenge. To accept, to grow through unity, all that's a challenge. And so at City, we're not seeking to be perfect, we're seeking to be healthy. To be a healthy church, to have healthy groups, and to be healthy people. And I believe God can help us do that one step at a time. So we know it's biblical. We're not making this up. This is not our agenda. This is not our mass plan. This is the plan of God. And as we do it, we benefit from it. So with that being said, how are our groups set up to do this, Scott and Sophie, and what happens? Yeah, thank you. So in the, in the spring, we had a great semester going. We had groups going full steam. It was our best spring ever, yep. actually. Yep. And then COVID happened, and we got word like, hey, everybody's going into lockdown and we sent an email to our group leaders we said hey like you got to keep meeting but you can't meet in person and so we had some quick training and um, we just went right into meeting virtually and and groups you know God still was working in those groups uh, and groups uh, continued to thrive and it was just a, a great opportunity for our, our leaders to grow Having said that, we know that online groups are not the preference for a lot of people. You know, Zoom fatigue is a real thing. And so as we're now given the green light to start meeting in, in modified ways, um, we are going to offer some face-to-face -face options. What I think is cool is that we've learned through COVID that uh, there's, there are definitely people who need the online groups. For yeah. us, we live 45 minutes away from church. I can hop in and do a Bible study yeah. without having to drive. Yeah. Um, child care is another issue for families. So we're, we're committed to always offering online groups from now on, but also offering face-to-face. -face. Uh, and so when, today when you go out, you'll see that we have a mixture of those. The last thing I'll say about the online is that we realized it was a great way to meet the needs and to meet new people who might not be here in our geography 
we started having um, people sign up, sending Facebook messages, sign up um, who were outside of our region or maybe even outside the state or yeah. even outside the country. And it was just a reminder to me that we're City Church for all nations. Yeah. And this is something we should Come be on. doing. We should be engaging with the, the church at large. So, right. yeah. Yeah. so when you um, head out there, um, after the service, you'll see some of the ways that we have groups organized. So some of them are organized by um, age. So there's 20s and 30s group. Um, there's the Super Saints, ladies 50 and up. Um, that's kind of your your area. Um, our One Life, our college ministry is great. Um, students, there's movement groups for you. Um, we also have like different family stages. So maybe if um, you're married, there's a communication and marriage group. There's a group for families who have been created through um, adoption or foster care. There's also groups if you're maybe coming with habits that you're struggling with or if you have past hurts, our recovery groups are amazing. Um, we have a, a recovery group for sexual abuse and assault, um, and they meet via Zoom. So you don't even have to, like, come to the church building and feel like everybody's looking at you, like you're yeah. in the comfort and, and safety of your own home. Um, we have some groups that are kind of more like a class, so are growing in the spirit. And it's really more like a structured like a class. And then there's some, there's one that's discerning the voice of God, which is really more reflective. And you're in someone's living room talking through, what does this look like for you? How have you grown in this area? Yeah. Um, men, women, they're just, they're organized in a lot of different ways to really kind of help you connect um, however you feel you can right now. Yeah, and I love that because everyone is someone to Jesus. Right. And so it's our heart to expand uh, with even more groups if you want to, you know, be a group leader and you have a group idea, we're coming yes. for you. But we want to have all types of groups because everyone, I think, can have a, have a place right. where they can learn and grow, you know, past this environment in a more intimate setting, if you will, and breaking through and connecting in the idea of the power of a village. Right. You know, we've said all month that it takes a village to raise a child, but I also believe it takes a village to get through life and to get through life well. And we uh, many times have to be willing to be a part of a village. Sometimes it doesn't automatically come to us. We have to invest and be intentional about that. And I believe in our verses, and if I read more verses, you would see it, that they were intentional about doing life together. And if you and I are intentional about it, you and I will receive the blessings that come with it. Amen. Notice in our verses, too, I mean, they were in the temple, then they were in homes. And I love the two words in this version, the New Living a translation. It says they shared meals with great joy and generosity. Mm. And right now, I don't know about you, but I want more joy because yeah. all I see around me is just chaos. I have felt more stress, more pressure in different ways this year than ever before. And so um, I need more joy. I want more joy. And the good thing about joy in Jesus is that is not contingent on money or status or circumstance. It's based on the person of who Christ is. I can have joy in God Amen. in any circumstance. Amen? Amen. And uh, it you know, makes no sense, but it's real. And they were also generous. So I was saying in the first worship experience that when I play basketball with my sons or I dance with my daughter, she and I are big fans of Sam Cooke. Come on, somebody. <laughs> so I turn on Sam Cooke and we dance in the kitchen together. And if I do that, or we watch Napoleon Dynamite together, we love that movie together. The rest of the family hates it. They don't know what they're talking about. It's the best movie of, it, of all time. Anyway, nonetheless, many times I'm tired. Summer and I have a date day. I'm tired. Uh, I, I don't feel like it. And I never tell myself I'm spending time. This is how I tell myself I'm spending time or maybe I'm wasting time. No, I'm investing time. I'm investing time in this moment for a long-term gain. So when we come to church, as you're here right now, this is never wasted time. We may not understand it. We may not feel it. We don't know what God's doing. We may not feel like being here. Who knows where we're at right now individually with all that's going on or just something totally different. But it's never wasted time. It's invested time. That's going to bring about a long-term benefit. When I go to group or I'm a part of the dream team or I go to the next steps or I give tithes and offers, whatever it is, in God, folks, many times God can immediately bless us. We can see the immediate blessing. Many times, though, it's a long-term investment. So I want to encourage you to think I'm investing my time. I'm investing because they were generous. So if I'm investing my time and I'm working out with my sons or I'm doing whatever with my daughter or my wife, then what I'm doing is, is I'm being generous with my time. 
I'm a generous person. I want to encourage you. This was a trait of the early church. So I want to challenge all of us in our busyness, in our culture, our American culture, the good and the bad with that. All that's happening. I want to encourage us all at some level, at some point, at some time in our faith to think generosity. Because a village is two ways. I receive a blessing, but then it gives me a place to be a blessing. And I want to encourage you in Romans 12, 15. They have a cool story about this. But real quick, in Romans 12, 15, Paul said to weep with those that weep and mourn with those that mourn. And so right now in our church, with the complexity of 40 nationalities, different ethnicities, different voting patterns, different you know, demographics in our own church, here's, here's a great opportunity to come alongside other people and weep with them and mourn with them and connect with them emotionally. Right now, what our country's telling us is if we don't agree politically, then we can't do life together. Mm -hmm. If I don't understand the plight of black and brown people, then I can't connect with them or vice versa. That is not what God says. I can emotionally support each other. We can su uh, support each other, and we, can, and, and we should come alongside each other and love through the love of God, through all these circumstances. And not let that or whatever separate us because we are joined together through Jesus in our faith. And so as we come together, this is our moment to think generosity, to think joy in the midst of you know, crying, in the midst of pain, fear, anxiety. Again, mental health is soaring right now with the need of support. All that and more, we need each other. And the, and the Bible says to laugh with those that laugh, weep with those that weep, mourn with those that mourn. Church settings can help us do that, and then being in a group can help us do that too. So and with that being said, what stands out as a moment for you guys where you saw that personally, maybe in a good way or in a, I'm in a good moment or in a bad moment? Sure. So one year ago, you might, if you were here, you might remember that I was on stage with Pastor David by myself because Sophie had just suffered a heart attack actually here in the building. Um, and it was an opportunity for us to activate this network of people um, that we didn't know that's what we were investing in. We didn't know that's how the payoff would come. Yeah. Um, you know, people who we maybe had been in a group with in previous semesters, right away they just started coming out of the woodwork. And we threw our daughter into a car with somebody and they drove away. And, you know, we headed to the hospital. And in the following days and weeks and, and really even the months, we felt that village surround us. Um, there were things like care packages and the gift cards for restaurants. And like when you ride in an ambulance, you don't remember like there's a car that has to go somewhere too. And so people driving our cars around and things like that, coming, wanting to come clean our home. Um, so cool. <laughs> amen. So, you know, we, we felt uh, the village really um, supporting us. And, and that village could have been created given Sunday morning experiences. It really could. But all those things you were saying about loving and forgiving, mm -hmm. those don't happen all that much when we're in this worship experience. What they, what they happen is when we're sitting in a circle with other people and we're talking about our lives uh, and we're just mingling in the hallway before yeah. class starts. Yeah. Um, and so those big ones are, are easy to, to find, you know, heart attacks and deaths and things like that. But it's also... The smaller moments, the mundane moments. Um, and another example for us was that um, in, we actually weren't even in a group with this woman, um, but we knew her from coming to church. And she, yeah, they were on the same night. And so we were just kind of passing, getting to know each other. And um, she knew that Sophie was pregnant. And she said to us, I have to tell you, I, I have this thing I need to tell you. It's the, I got this word in the spirit for you. And that was totally new to us. We had never heard about doing that. And we were like, what's that mean? <laughs> <laughs> and so she said, you know, the Spirit has just over and over been revealing to me that I need to share this word with you. And it's the word thrive. Um, and she said, I think that's your son's name. Mm -hmm. And we didn't know that our son was, was going to be a boy yet. Um, and then we had other people, actually, and this was so cool. They came to us and said, I keep getting this word thrive. Um, and so we ended up using that as his middle name, um, which is those mundane moments actually become monumental. I love that line. And Say it again. That's a great yeah, line. Yeah, those mundane moments become monumental, monumental, but you don't know it in the moment. Right. You're investing, yep. um, and then you see it come to fruition. It's our, that, the fullness of, of, of our life in Christ. Right. And it, you know, it was so comforting as a mom, you know, pregnant, and you're like, okay, yes, this baby is thriving, yes. 
but how cool that it didn't end there. Like now, as he grows, um, you know, he's he's kind of slow to talk. And I'm like, all right, but Lord, he's thriving and he's yes. going to thrive. Yes. Or for yeah. him, when he has a struggle in school, hey, buddy, I know this is hard, but let's remember what did God reveal about you? Yeah. You will thrive. And yeah. so it's it just keeps going. As parents, it's like, yes, let's we get front row seats to watch how is this going to be a pattern in his life of yeah. thriving. And I love, too, that, you know, we kind of got an emotional in the first yeah. worship experience because yeah. that lady's in heaven today. And what's powerful is, is in the kingdom of God, this is, please hear me, and I use this uh, maybe too much, but I'm not trying to, be a broken record. In the kingdom of God, you do not have to be Priscilla Schreier or Bishop T.D. Jakes or Billy Graham to make a difference. It's the small things. And today, this woman's in heaven. She's no longer with us. Um, But her legacy, her impact is now living past her in multiple ways, but with a family that isn't even her family in a young boy's life by his middle name. Please hear me. Everyone in this room and online can make a difference in Jesus by some of the smallest things. My dad always says this, that the supernatural is not always sensational. It's not fireworks and being on stage and thousands of people know who you are. It can be a simple moment, a simple conversation, a simple nudge, just whatever it is, a gift or whatever, that can change the trajectory. And that sounds sappy sometimes, and I'm really not trying to. It is real. And God set that up so that all of us can make a difference both now and for eternity. Isn't that awesome? God can use you and use me. We don't have to be a superstar. He just wants us to shine like a star. And before I set them up, because they have some really, I think, cool things to share here before we go. Notice in our verses, too, that they met in church, as we would call it church. They said temple, met in homes. They were generous. They had joy did life together. This is biblical. This is how the church started. It was in homes and in a bigger room or a temple or church. Then notice in verse 47, they enjoyed the goodwill of all the people. They praised God and God added to their church every day people who were being saved. That's why one of our core values at City is growth. We count people because people count because everyone is someone to Jesus. Every number has a name. Every name has a story. Every story means something to God. And so it's our heart, at your pace, as you're ready, this is not a pressure game. We just, you know, we do this every year, and we believe in what we're doing with groups. But this is the thing. We want to help you, as you grow with God, to connect, as the Bible asks us to, and to find the power of a village through biblical principles. And please hear me that you don't know you need community until you need community. This is the way it works. So the way he was saying, as you invest into what God has set in motion, it comes back in ways maybe you never dreamed of like it did for them. And so I want to encourage you I mean, to move forward. If you don't know Jesus today, receive Jesus today. Paul said today is the day of salvation, man. If you have and you're far from God in this moment, come back to God. This is the time, you know, and this is the moment to receive Jesus. If you are um, already walking with God, I want to encourage you to move forward. What step is for you? Because I would ask you this question before they share. I think this will stick to you as they share their final point. What in your life are you facing right now that you could use support in? Because I believe all of us in this room, if we really are honest in our mind and heart, there's an area of our life that we need support in. The guys group that I have on a once a month basis, we just met Thursday night, We hung out almost an hour after group just talking and fellowshipping. Every time I leave, I go to it tired because I had a long day. But every time I leave, I'm energized. And I love those dudes. And I'm the youngest cat in there. (laughs) Right? But I love it because they bless me. And this is how this works. And so I want to encourage you, what in your life? And they strengthen areas of my life that I need support in. What is that for you? Because all of us need someone. And we need Jesus, and then he puts people to help us, and we help others, and they help us. So why do we do groups at City? Uh, I think the first answer is they give it, Pastor David's always saying, you belong before you believe. Mm -hmm. And it gives us an opportunity to get that person to that next step. Mm -hmm. It's maybe the next step that's going to lead them to Christ. Um, you, You don't have to be a Christ follower to join our groups yet. You know, you'll belong, and, and you'll experience that community 
um, without people asking you, where do you stand on this or that? It's, it's, it's a loving and open uh, place. I think that Sophie and I both have examples of this. Groups allow us to share our story, to share uh, our victories and our defeats. After Sophie's, while Sophie was recovering, uh, we had another family in our church who um, kind of had a freak medical thing happen, and um, we didn't think that the wife was going to make it. And um, the husband actually reached out to me, and he said, hey, I need to talk. And we kind of knew where this was going to go, but when we sat down for lunch, it was like we're part of a club that nobody wants to be in, and it's hard when your wife is recovering. It was huge for me. It's hard to tell her things about how it's hard for you because she's the one who went through it. Um, and it was, I needed somebody to be able to talk to about what I was experiencing without burdening her. Yeah. And we sat across the table together and had that, that powerful conversation. Um, and that's why we do groups. Yeah. Yeah. When you were talking about generosity, I was thinking that for us, like, we have to be generous with our story. Um, and there's a verse in Revelation, um, Revelation 12, 11, and it says they overcame him, the enemy, Satan, by the blood of the lamb mm-hmm. and with the word of their testimony. And we have so seen that in our story. You know, when I had my heart attack, there were um, pains and symptoms that immediately you were there, PD, in the hospital, they left. And, and it was the blood of the lamb, the healing power of the blood yeah. that was, it was miraculous. There are also parts of it that have lingered and that, um, you know, through my doctor's wisdom and through medication, like I'm, I'm growing and, and getting stronger. There have also then been um, effects that we, we didn't see coming. And so it's when that the word of the testimony kind of hits you real life is when you have a follow up. You get a lot of follow up appointments. In one of your follow-up appointments, and the, the sweet doctor tells you, you can't have any more pregnancies. Your heart can't handle that. And so in that moment, all of those plans that we had, all of the desires for our family, Satan just took him like a, almost like a big thing, a box of rocks or something, and just like shook it. And, and it was all just turned upside down. And it was in that moment where that verse comes to life. Yes. You do not get this, Satan. Come on. You will not steal our joy. Yes. You don't get to write this story. Yes, come on. And so real life, we're, we're grappling with that. We're going to the Lord like, okay, what is your plan? What, what is our family going to, to look like? Um, so it's those hard things that, but I know that we will overcome him by this testimony and and being in community, there was this sweet woman. I had no idea. But after we got that news and I was sharing with her, and she, just the words of, I know exactly how you feel. And she said she had been in um, some unhealthy relationships. She was finally in a good relationship with a good man. They were ready to start a family. And she heard those exact same words from the doctor. And she said, I don't know what your solution will be. I don't know how God's going to work through this. But... I can sit here in the pain with you and say, I know, I know how it hurts right this minute. Um, mm. and, and that's just, that's how it is. That's this walking it out. And, yeah. and you know, really, it's, it's the good and the bad or the hard and the easy all at the same time. Right. Like we're navigating this um, about our family and our children. But in, in the same time, Scott has moved from a teacher to a principal. And God has, has blessed us in that. And so to have people to... To celebrate that with, it's, it's all of that at the same time. And it's the, oh, great, you know, global pandemic, we're all at home, texting other moms, okay, which Play-Doh recipe are you making? Because this one did not work, <laughs> and you know. Um, so that's what it is. And it's, um, it's not comparing stories or competing that's with good. them. That's good. But, like, I'm waiting for God to reveal this to us. I want to pray with you while you're waiting for him to reveal whatever you're believing for yeah. or waiting for. So good. Um, so, yeah, we, we have to be generous with our story. Um, yeah, because it's how we defeat him. And, and it's in the supernatural and it's in the natural because right. we have a great friend um, here at the church who tested positive for COVID and they sent her home. Like, Don't stop anywhere. Go home. Don't talk to anybody. And uh, she got home and she shut the door and was like, well, here I am for two weeks. What am I going to do? I, 
I feel so silly. Like, did I get other people sick? Should I have been more careful? Um, and so we texted her and we said, hey, we heard. Um, what do you need? And she said, number one, I need prayers. Uh, I'm feeling so guilty and I'm feeling so confused and scared and paranoid. I need a lot of prayer. Um, and then she said, number two, if you could, I'd love a watermelon. <laughs> <laughs> so I ran to Kroger, <laughs> prayed the whole way, got a watermelon and left it on her doorstep and waved through the window. You know, and so like it's prayers and it's watermelon. Come on, it's that's our next t-shirt. Prayers and watermelon. Come on. City Church Merc. Yeah, so. yeah. Well, in closing, you know, I, th I think about where all of us are at right now in this moment. And I think about it does us good when we just understand how they did it in the scriptures and we seek to do it the same way. And this is why we do groups. This is just a little snippet of it. And today I want to ask you a couple of things. If you're newer to city and or you've been here a while, and um, maybe not ask you, but I would say this. If you're newer to city and, you, and or you've been here a while and you're just not ready for a group, you're emotionally not there mentally, physically, you know, or whatever, you're just not ready, please hear me today, no pressure. It's okay. I would encourage you to come on the weekends, uh, to watch online. I would encourage you uh, to consider going to Next Steps, which is a way to connect in the church and learn about us and, and us learn about you and help you just, I mean, to connect at whatever level you want. So please know there's no, you know, a bait and switch here. You go at your pace and please just stay plugged in. And or if you're newer and you've been here a while and you would say, you know what, I, I'm ready for this or maybe I'm a little uncomfortable, but I'm ready to, I mean, to step through that or I'm nervous or I just feel God leading me to do it, I would ask you to do it and to take a chance on a group and to see all the plethora of groups we have and the different types of groups, how one can connect with you and again, to go at your pace. Even the last worship experience, I had a gentleman come up to me that I went to elementary school with. And it was great to see him today. And he said, I've been feeling God call me. I just haven't been listening. And I'm coming. But he asked me, he said, could you just let me go at my pace? And I said, man, absolutely. You go at your pace. Take your time. We're here for you. And I would say the same thing to you. You go at your pace. You have our love and support. And I believe as we let God lead us, as we let God help us, and we just, you know, as we're ready, if it's right now or later, we do this every, you know, every, you know, all year round, basically, we do groups. Move forward. It's biblical. It's good. There's power in a village. And I believe God will help us and we will help someone else. How many believe Amen. in this Jesus today? Amen. I believe it. Amen. Come on, give him a hand. Great job, Scott and Sophie. You know, in this moment, I would ask you to please stand and you online, please uh, to stay I tuned in right now. I'm going to get out of the way for them to get the stuff. I'm going to ask you all again in overflow online. I know people are watching coast to coast in various countries right now in this moment and locally. Thank you so much for watching online and for being in the room. You know, if I think about all that's going on and I think about what I'm facing? What are you facing today? You know, I, I'm raising a black family according to American standards. And I'm thinking about having talks with my three boys. And I think about what we're navigating as a church. And it breaks my heart. I think about the pressure and the support that I am so thankful that I have. I wonder today in your world, what is pressing you? And maybe it's depression, anxiety, fear, paranoia, a divorce. Maybe it's financial stress, physical health, torment, addiction, unforgiveness, rage, sexual assault, sexual misconduct. Who knows what? The beautiful thing is, is that we're all in this together and that no one has it all and that all of us are just imperfect, at times jacked up. Come on, somebody, right? And we need Jesus all the same. And at City, we're a hospital. 
Amen. I need that healing so much. How about you of Jesus healing and touching and grace and mercy and faithfulness and kindness? And so today, if you don't know Jesus, this is not just a theory. This is a real thing. He's a real person. And if you've never received Jesus and or you have, but you're far from God in this moment right now, receive God today. So please bow your heart and bow your head. And you would say, that's the greatest need that we have. And you would say, you know what, Pastor Dave? I'm in that place. I know I need God. I know I need Jesus. I need to come back to God. And I want him. Right now in this moment, if that's you, go ahead and raise your hand to heaven. I want to pray for you all over this room and online today. Thank you. God bless you today. Good. God bless you today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. People coming to God today. Thank you so much. You overflow online. Thank you. That's the greatest thing you could ever do. I just gave you a little snippet of emotion trying to hold it back of some of the things I'm feeling right now. That my men's group helps me once a month. My friends help me one, you know, every day if I need it. What are you facing in your life that you could be supported in? And again, like I mentioned, if you're ready, then be in a group. If you're not ready, then be in a large group. Stay plugged in. But let God's plan come around you and you come in it as well. You be a blessing in it. But let that happen because we all need it right now. I believe more than ever. And you would say, you know what, Pastor Dave, there's an area in my life, there's an area, it's a deep secret, maybe other people know it, uh, but I need support, I need help, man, I need God, I need others, I need, I need strength right now. And if that's you today and you know that and you want support in this, go ahead right now and raise your hand to heaven. I want to pray for you in this moment all over the room and all online. Thank you so much for raising your hands. So many hands, my hands raised too. Follow me in this prayer so no one's left out and say, Lord Jesus, my heart is yours and I run to you. I give you all of me. My heart is yours. For anything wrong in my life, I turn from that. I say no to it. I say yes to you. I choose to live for you. Help me. I'm yours. And through the Holy Spirit, I choose to give and to receive in the village you have for me. In the name of Jesus, amen. How many believe that today? I believe God's hearing our prayers. He's moving one day at a time. 